Welcome to Millennium News Hour. I am Tanzi Banaurin. In today's bulletin, we will present top and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines. U.S. and U.K. issue new sanctions on Iran in response to Tehran's weekend attack on Israel. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. secures ballot access in battleground state of Michigan. Nicole Shanahan pumps $2 million into Robert F. Kennedy Jr. campaign after joining Ticket. 12 jurors have been picked for Donald Trump's hush money trial, selection of alternates ongoing. U.S. will provide $6.1 billion to Micron Technology for cheap plants in New York and Idaho, Schumer says. Nancy Pelosi's book, The Art of Power, will reflect on her career in public life. NASA chief warns of Chinese military presence in space. U.S. reimposes oil sanctions against Venezuela over election concerns. Thousands evacuated as Indonesia volcano erupts causes tsunami threat. India's election begins. Rain wipes out first Pakistan New Zealand T20 after just two balls. And NFL prospect AJ Simon dies one week before the draft. You are listening to headlines now news in detail. The U.S. and the U.K. on Thursday imposed a new round of sanctions on Iran as concern grows that Tehran's unprecedented attack on Israel could fuel a wider war in the Middle East. The sanctions were meant to hold Iran accountable for its weekend attack and to deter further such activity. But the practical impact is likely to be limited because many of the targeted companies already were subject to U.S. sanctions and the individuals singled out for new sanctions are unlikely to have assets in U.S. jurisdictions. Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control targeted 16 people and two entities in Iran that produce engines that powered the drones used in the April 13 attack on Israel. OFAC also sanctioned five firms involved in steel production and three subsidiaries of Iranian automaker Bahman Group, which is accused of materially supporting Iran's military and other sanctioned groups. A representative from Bahman was not immediately available for comment. Additionally, the UK is targeting several Iranian military branches and individuals involved in Iran's drone and ballistic missile industries. Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has secured a place on the ballot in the battleground state of Michigan, state officials confirmed Thursday, elevating his potential to affect the November election. Kennedy's independent bid has spooked allies of both President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump, the presumptive Democratic and Republican nominees who fear his famous last name and dedicated support among a slice of disaffected voters 
will be enough to tape the election. Biden planned to accept endorsements from at least 15 members of the Kennedy political family during a campaign stop Thursday in Philadelphia. A spokesperson for the Michigan Secretary of State's office said the Natural Law Party, a minor party with a line on the state's ballot, nominated Kennedy at a convention. Kennedy faces an expensive and time-consuming process to get on the ballot in all 50 states and the District of Columbia without the backing of a political party. Michigan is the second state after Utah to affirm that his name will be presented to voters. His campaign or an allied super PAC say they have collected enough signatures in several other states including the battlegrounds of Arizona, Georgia, Nevada and North Carolina but they haven't yet been validated by elections officials. Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s running mate Nicole Shanahan made a significant donation to his underdog campaign for the White House one day after he announced his vice presidential pick last month. Shanahan, a wealthy lawyer and entrepreneur, officially joined the Kennedy ticket in Oakland, California on March 26. The next day, she donated $2 million to the campaign, according to Kennedy's latest Federal Election Commission filing. She had previously donated a smaller amount to Kennedy's campaign, but because she is now a candidate on the ticket, she can spend unlimited amounts of her own money on the effort. Shanahan also previously donated millions to the Super PAC supporting Kennedy's independent campaign American Values 2024 in February for an ad that aired during the Super Bowl. Puck first reported Shanahan's infusion of cash into the Kennedy campaign. Shanahan has not appeared publicly with Kennedy or done a live interview since she left the stage in late March, though she has been posting on social media about visiting places like the southern border in Yuma, Arizona. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news, entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia, available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your fist. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. A jury of 12 people was seated Thursday in former President Donald Trump's history making hush money trial, propelling the proceedings closure to opening statements and the start of weeks of dramatic testimony. The court quickly turned to selecting alternate jurors. The jury includes a sales professional, a software engineer, a security engineer, an English teacher, a speech therapist, multiple lawyers, an investment banker, and a retired wealth manager. The first ever trial of a former American president will unfold in the middle of this year's race for the White House, ensuring that the legal troubles of the presumptive Republican nominee will be a dominant issue in the contest against Democratic incumbent Joe Biden. The trial will almost certainly feature unflattering testimony about the Trump's personal life before he became president, with allegations that he falsified business records to suppress stories in the final days of the 2016 election about his sexual relationships. The jury selection process appeared wobbly earlier in the day when two jurors were dismissed, 
one after expressing doubt about her ability to be fair following disclosure of details about her identity and the other over concerns that some of his answers in court may have been inaccurate. But lawyers who began the day with only five jurors settled on the remaining seven for the panel in quick succession along with one alternate. Judge Yuan Merchant has said his goal is to have six alternates. The Biden administration has reached an agreement to provide $6.1 billion in government support for Micron technology to produce advanced memory computer chips in New York and Idaho. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer personally quoted Micron to build what would ultimately be a set of four chip factories near Syracuse in the town of Clay. He noted in a witnessed interview that the announcement was a sign to voters about how Democrats were reviving the manufacturing sector. It will be the biggest memory chip plant in America, said Schumer. For the Syracuse area, this is the best thing that's happened probably since the Erie Canal. The comparison to the 1825 infrastructure project that connected the Great Lakes to the Atlantic Ocean is audacious, but it gets at the possible magnitude of the economic impact as well as the national security stakes in an increasingly digital world, including the government support, Micron plans to invest $100 billion in upstate New York over the next two decades. The investment would lead to an estimated 9,000 direct jobs and 40,000 construction jobs. Micron has also announced plans for a 15 billion memory chip plant in its hometown of Boise, Idaho. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has completed a book about her years in public life from legislation she helped enact to such traumatizing moments as the January 6th siege of the U.S. Capitol and the assault at her San Francisco home that left her husband with a fractured skull. Simon & Schuster announced Thursday that Pelosi's The Art of Power will be released August 6. People always ask me how I did what I did in the house. Pelosi, the first woman to become a speaker, said in a statement, In the art of power, I reveal how and more importantly, why. Pelosi, 84, was first elected to the House in 1987, rose to minority leader in 2003 and to speaker four years later, when the Democrats became the majority party. She served as speaker from 2007 to 2011 and again from 2019 to 2023 and was widely credited with helping to mobilize support for and pass such landmark bills as the Affordable Care Act and the Inflation Reduction Act. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events every minute, every second something is happening somewhere around the globe and you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come Millennium News Hour to get you connected with top USA and international trending news which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jadu TV, Radiant IP TV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your fist. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. Now it's time for global updates. China is bolstering its space capabilities and is using its civilian program to mask its military objectives, the head of the U.S. space agency, NASA said Wednesday, warning that Washington must remain vigilant. 
China has made extraordinary strides, especially in the last 10 years, but they are very, very secretive, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson told lawmakers on Capitol Hill. We believe that a lot of their so-called civilian space program is a military program, and I think, in effect, we are in a race, Nelson added. He said he hoped Beijing would come to its senses and understand that civilian space is for peaceful users, but added, we have not seen that demonstrated by China. Nelson's comment came as he testified before the House Appropriations Committee on NASA's budget for fiscal 2025. He said the United States should land on the moon again before China does, as both nations pursue lunar missions, but he expressed concern that were Beijing to arrive first. It could say, OK, this is our territory, you stay out. The United States is reimposing sanctions on Venezuela's vital oil sector over what it says is the government's failure to adhere to democratic principles ahead of elections in July. The administration of President Joe Biden said it would not renew a license that expired early on Thursday and which had partially eased the punitive measures since October after a U.S.-backed election deal was reached between the government and the Venezuelan opposition in Barbados. Venezuela's president, Nicolas Maduro, and his representatives have not fully made the commitments made under the Electoral Roadmap Agreement, said U.S. Department of State spokesperson Matthew Miller. Therefore, General License 44 which authorized transactions related to the oil and gas sector with Venezuela will expire after midnight and not be renewed. As the clock ticked down on the deadline, the U.S. Treasury Department announced on Wednesday that it had issued a replacement license giving companies 45 days to win down their business and transactions in the OPEC country's oil and gas sector. Indonesian rescuers raced to evacuate thousands of people Thursday after a volcano erupted five times, forcing authorities to close a nearby airport and issue a warning about falling debris that could cause a tsunami. The crater of Mount Ruang flamed with lava against a backdrop of lightning bolts overnight after erupting four times on Wednesday forcing authorities to raise its alert level to the highest of a four-tiered system. The volcano in Indonesia's outermost region was still billowing a column of smoke on Thursday morning, prompting authorities to shut the nearest international airport in Manado City on Sulawesi Island for 24 hours. Authorities said they were rushing to evacuate 11,000 residents from the nearby area that included the remote island of Tagulengtang, home to around 20,000 people. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news, entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your fist. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. You are watching latest global updates. 
polling booths across India was set to open Friday for the first leg of world's largest general election, with voting to be held in 102 constituencies across 21 states and union territories. The first vote in the seven-phase election will be cast Friday, with results set for June 4, as Prime Minister Narendra Modi looks set to win a historic third term in the face of a struggling opposition challenge. The election commission has to set up more than 1 million polling stations for the nearly two-month duration, with 15 million officials and security personnel fanning out for the task. Nearly 970 million voters are eligible to cast their ballot in the polls. Constituencies in the states of Uttar Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, Tamil Nadu, Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Tripura and West Bengal will be among the ones to go to polls in this first phase. The election is set to be held in seven phases, ending on June 1. Elections will be held for 543 seats in the lower house of parliament called the Lok Sabha for a term of five years. To rule a party or a coalition needs a simple majority of 272 seats. Bharatiya Janata Party won 303 seats the last time, followed by 52 for the main opposition Indian National Congress. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 17,388.09. The NYSE composite is decreased by 15.35 points or 0.09%. Tokyo stock close price is 38,079.70. The Nikkei 225 index is increased by 117.90 points or 0.31%. Shanghai stock close price is 3074.22. The Shanghai index is increased by 2.84 points or 0.09%. Hong Kong stock close price is 16,385.87. The Hang Seng index is increased by 134.03 points or 0.82%. Bombay stock close price is 72,488.99. The Sensex index is decreased by 454.69 points or 0.62%. Let's have a look on today's sports stories. Heavy rain caused the first 2020 international between Pakistan and New Zealand to be abandoned after just two deliveries in Rawalpindi on Thursday. New Zealand skipper Michael Braswell won the toss, which had also been delayed by 30 minutes, and opted to bat but no action was possible for two and a half hours. Umpires Asan Raza and Alim Dar then announced a five-over side game at 10.10 local time. Pakistan paceman Shahin Shah Afridi conceded two leg buys to debutant Tim Robinson of the first ball before bowling the batsman with a sharp delivery of the next. But as soon as the Pakistan fielders started celebrating the wicket, the rain returned to force an abandonment. College football player Amitral A.J. Simon died just one week before potentially realizing his pro ball dreams. His former university announced Wednesday. Simon, 25, transferred to the University of Albany where he played as a defensive lineman with the Great Danes 
for the 2022-2023 season. The school said in a statement on social media that Simon will be profoundly missed. AJ was a tremendous young man and even better teammate throughout this time at U Albany, the school said. He was a role model both on and off the field, serving as a pillar to this program over the last two years. A cause of death was not disclosed. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast. Before finishing today's news, let's hear out the headlines again. US and UK issue new sanctions on Iran in response to Tehran's weekend attack on Israel. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. secures ballot access in battleground state of Michigan. Nicole Shanahan pumps $2 million into Robert F. Kennedy Jr. campaign after joining Ticket. 12 jurors have been picked for Donald Trump's hush money trial, selection of alternates ongoing. U.S. will provide $6.1 billion to Micron Technology for cheap plants in New York and Idaho, Schumer says. 
Nancy Pelosi's book, The Art of Power, will reflect on her career in public life. NASA chief warns of Chinese military presence in space. U.S. reimposes oil sanctions against Venezuela over election concerns. Thousands evacuated as Indonesia volcano erupts causes tsunami threat. India's election begins. Rain wipes out first Pakistan New Zealand T20 after just two balls. And NFL prospect AJ Simon dies one week before the draft. That's all for today. Keep watching Millennium News Hour for latest news update. To stay updated, like our Facebook page. Subscribe our YouTube channel and visit our website. Our website address is www.millenniumnews24.com. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia, available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all the latest news worldwide. Thank you.